loving Father in heaven. Thank you so much, O oh God, for the continued life and strength that you give your children. Thank you, Father, for always being there for you, each and every one of us. Even though we go through life with many hardships and sorrows, you never fail your children. You have always been our strength, our shelter, and our refuge. Father in heaven, before we continue, we beg of you, please forgive us of the many sins that we have committed. Allow us, Father, to be cleansed by your power and your love so that, Father, we will be able to be worthy once again to receive the blessings coming from you. Father in heaven, you know our purpose. We want to fulfill our duties unto you. We want to be able to sing praises and magnify your holy name. May you please accept each and every one of us, your children from different parts of the world. We may be scattered in different places, Father, but we are all together in one voice, in one purpose, and one desire to worship and glorify your holy name. Please bless our brother whom you shall use as your instrument. Endow in him the knowledge and strength coming from you. Send forth the Holy Spirit. Fill him with the Spirit coming from you, Father, so that he may preach with power and clarity. And may we all benefit from it by receiving all the blessings that you have prepared for each and every one of us. May you heal your children, those who may be sick, Father. Give us the life and strength and the health that we need so that we may continue to use this life in giving praises to your holy name. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are constantly persecuted and oppressed. We know, Father, that this is a part of your grand plan. May you use us as your instruments, Father, so that we may be able to extend your, your loving arm unto them, be able to help them in their need. Allow us to be able to fulfill this duty unto you so that we may be able to give glory to your holy name. It is our fervent hope, Father, that you will be with us, not only throughout the whole duration of our worship service, but throughout our life, so that we may be able to finish our race and be able to receive the grace of salvation come judgment day. For all of these things, we ask and beg in the name of our Lord, Christ Jesus. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we all know that because of severe difficulties in this life, many people of this world falls into evil acts. There are those who use deception to earn money, while others resort to stealing. Some even engage in illegal activities just for them to have something that they can provide for themselves or their family. Such kind of acts can be found amongst the people of this world because they were never even taught the words of God. 
but on behalf of the true members of the Church of Christ. For those who claim to be members of the Church of Christ as God's people in these last days, we should live in, in accordance to the calling that we have received from the Lord Almighty God. We should allow that our spiritual lives be enhanced day after day. It is not good that we are called by that great name, that noble name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are the one that's staining that name of Christ. Isn't that like what others may say? Is he not a member of the Church of Christ? Then why is it that he has fallen into drug dealing, robbing banks, robbing homes, or all these things? See, it's always the name of Christ that's being mocked when you proclaim that you have that great name so we should be careful brothers and sisters never to stain the name of the lord jesus christ because that name has bearing towards our salvation acts 4 10 and 12 it has bearing for the forgiveness of sins first john 2 12 it has bearing for our eternal life first John 5, 13. And if that is the case, if it is so important, that name of Christ that was given to him by God, we should respect that and never stain the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What should fill the lives of true members of the church of Christ? Let us read here in the book of Philippians 1.11, filled with the fruits of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. What should we be filled with? With righteousness. What is the righteousness of God? Romans 1.16 and 17, the gospel. How do we know that we are filled with the righteousness of God? Is it enough that we know the gospel? No, we should put into practice the words that is taught to us so that we will be blessed. James 1.25, do we want to be blessed? Do we want to be amongst those who will be constantly be guided by the Lord Almighty God? Why do we say so? Because when we fulfill the words of God, the commandments of our God, then God is in us as written in 1st John 3 24 do you want God to be in us or in you brothers and sisters see to it in our everyday life whether we are working whether we are in school whether what we are doing in our everyday life righteousness should always prevail in our hearts or holiness why is it that we should live holy lives let's turn to 1st Peter the chapter is 1 verse 15 this is stated, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Why is it that we should live righteously before the sight of God? Because the one that called us is holy, therefore we should be holy. So if we would want that we will live a holy lives, let us see to it, brothers and sisters, that we uphold the words of God. Why? Because the words of God can sanctify us. As written in John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So the words of God could make us holy. And what else is holy? The words of God is just good and holy. Romans 7, 12. And so if it's just, so in our everyday lives, we should put into practice just things. We should never do unjust things, even towards our fellow man, even towards our loved ones. All the things that is good and holy is based upon the righteousness of God, based upon the commandments of God. This is how we should live righteously before the sight of God. Should we also practice holiness in earning a living? Brothers and sisters, let me turn to you here. In 1710 through 11, of the book of uh, Jeremiah, I will read. I, the Lord, search the minds and test the hearts of man. I treat each one according to the way he lives, according to what he does. The person who gets money dishonestly is like a bird that hatches eggs it didn't lay. In the prime of life, he will lose his riches and in the end, 
he is nothing but a fool. So should we also live righteously in earning a living? Yes. So how do we know that uh, we could be able to check up in ourselves if we're living righteously in earning a living? Always understand that God searches our thoughts, searches our hearts. He knows if we are to plan something wickedly or in an unjust way or just to strive to get money in a evil way or have some kind of possession in a wicked way. Remember, the one that calls us to the true faith is our God, is the same God that knows all things as written in 1 John 3.20. So you could never hide anything from God. Why? Even if you go in the dark, even though if you go to the day or under the sea or in the outer space, wherever you want to go, where do you want to go? You want to ride that rocket that, uh, uh, what's his name, is, is trying to promote? You want to go at least for a moment there in outer space? Oh, Bidaya 1-4 says, I will bring you down, God says. Oh, how about if I go under the sea? And the sea gave up the dead, as written in the book of Revelations 20, 13, 14, and 15. So, really, do you, do you have a place to hide? Psalms 139, 7 through 11, God is there on, under the water, in the heavens, everywhere. So, really, there's no place to hide. So, if that's the case, brothers and sisters, let us live up to the holy calling anyway god did not call everybody to be true members of the church of christ at least those who continued like what we have sung a while ago that the daughter of zion will continue on earth and that's us let us prove it brothers and sisters that we will not fail our god in living righteously before his sight now why are they called fools why will their riches not last what will God do to an evil person, even if he gets rich? Say, for instance, oh, uh, oh, I'm so rich, you know, I'm able to gain all this. But the only thing uh, I gain it in a dishonest way. Oh, say the person gets rich in that. Uh, what does the Bible have to say when it is gained in a dishonest way? That is why they are called fools. Let's read uh, Job 5, 3 to 5. I myself have seen a fool taking root, but suddenly his house was cursed. His children are far from safety, crushed in court without a defender. The hungry consume his harvest, taking it even from among thorns, and the thirsty pant after his wealth. Brothers and sisters, does it mean if a person is able to acquire wealth in an unjust way? There's so many unjust ways, like bribery or uh, stealing uh, or robbing. Oh, but I'm honest, brother. I'm an honest robber. I robbed the bank, honestly. Is that possible? You can't be no honest robber, right? Once you're a robber, you are uh, stealing, right? And you gain wealth in that way. And if that happens, brothers and sisters, the Bible say that these kind of people, their household will be cursed. How about the children? That includes their children. They will not be blessed, brothers and sisters. So really, it is sad to say if we allow that wickedness prevail in our household and we don't renew or reform our ways of lives, then we know that God could curse our lives. Do we want to be cursed? Of course not. Do we want to be blessed? Then live up to what God wants us to do. And if that is the case, we can be sure that in all aspects, even in the future of our children, even in the life to come, we will be blessed. Why? Because we upheld the righteousness of God instead of taking side of the wickedness or in the side of darkness. We want to always live righteously before the side of God. Not because we just want to be different from any other people, but because that is what God expects from his people. So what is the good result if one's work and his way of life is righteous? Let's now read. In Psalms, the chapter is 101, I rather chapter 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose, whose delight 
is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. A black person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Brothers and sisters, how does the Bible describe a person who really fears God? To fear God is to hate evil, Proverbs 8, 13. To fear God is the beginning of knowledge, Proverbs 1, 7. So when we live righteously before the sight of God, what is it that we are doing? Well, we are investing so that we will be blessed by our God. To what are they likened to? Like what the Bible says, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prospers. Do we want that life? Then base your life in living righteously before the sight of God. All that God has said long ago has been fulfilled. This will be fulfilled in the lives of those who live righteously before the sight of God. So let us stop uh, living in accordance to the wicked way of life and live righteously before God. What will never happen to the righteous as taught to us in Psalms. The chapter is 37 verse 25. This is what is stated. I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. What is the promise of the Lord Almighty God? Especially on behalf of those who live righteously before his sight. They will never beg for food as what the Bible says. If there are many people that may be begging for food because of the hardships in this life, you should see to it that if you live righteously before the sight of God, if you are a person that is a true member of the church of Christ, that belongs to Christ and living and upholding the commandments of God, you will never beg for food. Why? Because this is the promise that God gives to those who live righteously. You may acquire all the wealth in this world in an unrighteous way. And you may have all the food in this world. But the Bible is clear in the book of Matthew that you may gain the whole world. But if you lose your life, you gain nothing. You may have not gained the whole world, brothers and sisters. You may be poor, but in times of your needs, for sure, you will be blessed by the Lord Almighty God. How do we know? Let's read here in Genesis. The chapter is 26. The verse is 1 through three, as stated in this passage of the Holy Scriptures. How did God prove that if one lives righteously before his sight, even in times of need, he will always be there? 26, one to three of Genesis. Now there was a famine in the land besides the, the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and will bless you for to you and your descendants. I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father, Abraham, who made this promise. God, to whom did he make this promise? To Isaac, even during the time of Isaac, he reaped a hundredfold. If you really uh, go back and study the history of Isaac, he became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. Is it wrong to be wealthy? No, as long as you know that wealth has come from God and you were blessed by it because you have proven your loyalty to him. That is just your reward for you. But if you're just trying to use the name of Christ and then you're trying to acquire uh, wealth in that way, in an unjust way, you're the most pitiful person in this world, according to the book of Corinthians. Let's continue. God bless Isaac. This proves that the people of God should fear nothing in times of famine because God will never forsake them. Brothers and sisters, we know what we all went through. We know how we started in first being God's people. We know that all of us went through some kind of needs in this life. But let us ask this question, did God forsake us? 
Did not God respond to our call and provided all our needs? We are the witness of all the good and loving kindness of the Lord Almighty God to us. Who else was not forsaken by God in times of famine? Let's now read here in First King, the chapter is 17, verses 1 through 4. A prophet named Elijah from Tishba in Gilead said to King Ahab, in the name of the Lord, the living God of Israel, whom I serve, I tell you that there will be no dew or rain for the next two or three years until I say so. Then the Lord said to Elijah, leave this place and go east and hide yourself near Cherith Brook, east of the Jordan. The brook will supply you with water to drink, and I have commanded ravens to bring you food there. Who is this individual that have encountered uh, also problems that may surround him? And there are there is a famine at that time, but yet he was protected and given uh, blessings by our Lord Almighty God. It was Prophet Elijah? He was instructed to go to a place so that he will have uh, plenty of water there. And how is he that he's going to eat? If you really read the verse, who would provide him the food that God will utilize? Huh? Ravens. Could you imagine? Jollibee? No, not Jollibee. See, you're getting hungry again. See, uh, that, that, that's not even a bird. That's just a bee with a wing. Okay. But if you imagine God uses birds to feed his prophets. Now, let me ask you, brethren. Do we have brethren in our time that cannot really uh, have anything? But you, as brothers and sisters who support this mission, beloved brethren, aren't you like the ravens that provide help to our brethren who may be jailed or who have been oppressed, have not God given blessings to them and even those who help in giving uh, for the needs of those who are in need. Now, when the water was about to really um, uh, dissipate at that time, what did God do so that uh, this prophet of his, Elijah, would continue to receive blessings or to have something for his everyday life? Let's read 1 King 17, 9 through 16. Now, Go to the town of Zarephath near Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow who lives there to feed you. So Elijah went to Zarephath. And as he came to the town gate, he saw a widow gathering firewood. Please bring me a drink of water, he said to her. And as she was going to get it, he called out, and please bring me some bread too, she answered. By the living Lord, your God, I swear that I don't have any bread. Understand the situation when he went to this widow? What was the situation? That this widow had no bread. So what do you mean that he had no bread? There's no pandesal that time or no loves uh, uh, or bread at that time. Well, whatever brand of bread is it, there was no such at that time when this widow was asked for bread. All I have is a handful of flour in a bowl and a bit of olive oil in a jar. I came here to gather some firewood to take back home and prepare what little I have for my son and me. You know, that, uh, that ingredients, if you want to say it, that is in that jar was only to make uh, food for his child and her as a widow. Let's proceed. That we will be, that will be our last meal. Could you imagine? Like, it's like you're in a death sentence, right? Okay, eat your best meal before you get injected and die. Is it like that? No, but this is really at the time of famine, but it was not about that this widow did something wrong. But listen, 
that will be our last meal, and then we will starve to death. But what did Elijah say to this widow? Let's proceed. Don't worry. Be happy. That's not in the verse. Just don't worry, he said. Elijah said to her, go and prepare your meal. But first, make a small loaf from what you have and bring it to me. And then prepare the rest for you and your son. Could you imagine that amount of flour in the jar? Uh, he had to be first served before she can serve herself and the child. Let's proceed. And then prepare the rest for you and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The bowl will not run out of flour or the jar run out of oil before the day that I, the Lord, send rain. The widow went and did as Elijah had told her. And all of them had enough food for many days. As the Lord had promised through Elijah, the bowl did not run out of flour, nor did the jar run out of oil. What is it that we can learn from here? God's blessings and promise to those who live righteously. You know, during the time of Elijah, he was one that stood up to take side with God and did not submit to King Ahab in doing wickedness in bowing or worshiping other gods but even with that he was blessed and even in times of famines he was blessed there was even a time that this widow's son died but through means of God's grace by using Elijah he was brought back to life see even those who help are blessed and those who are being helped are blessed. We help one another. Let us continue, brothers and sisters, especially the end of this month is uh, fast approaching. We need to help our brethren in the different parts of the world. The lawyers should be paid in all that, in other things, um, in providing also needs for our other oppressed brothers and sisters. And we are so thankful that there are so many brethren of ours who are united in helping such brethren. And do you think that God will forget what you have done for them? Of course not. He did not forget the widow, that one that was made, that was very poor there. Could you imagine God used a poor widow for a prophet? So we may not be all rich, brothers and sisters, but we are rich in faith and in good works. Let us, especially now starting preparing ourselves for the next month, our thanksgiving to God for being, he's so being so grateful. And we are God's people. There's nothing that we could ever repay our God because whenever we help our fellow man, we follow the teachings of our God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And if we do so, we know that we are fulfilling the righteousness of God. This blesses us in this life and in the life to come. First Timothy 4, 8. So, brothers and sisters, what should those who have anxieties because of economic difficulties and uncertainties do? As written in Philippians, the chapters 4, verse 6. Uh, I'll read to you the answer, brethren. 4, 6. Don't worry about anything. Put in all your, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always take, always asking Him with a thankful heart. What is it that we should always do if by chance we feel that we are in need? The Bible says, Don't worry. There are things that sometimes make us worry. But the Bible says, don't worry. But what is it that we should do? We should ask everything through prayers. Why is it that we should not worry? The Bible says in 19, and with all his abundant wealth through Christ, my God will supply 
all your need. Do you think that God can supply all our needs? Let us work together as brothers and sisters in striving to all have what is needed for this mission to help our fellow brethren, to help our fellow men. So when we do help our brothers and sisters, we follow the teachings of God. When we love one another, that proves that we are true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ says, as I have loved you. That's how we should love one another as to be true disciples of Christ. John 13, 34 and 35. And the Bible is clear that the abundance of wealth through Christ, my God will supply all your needs. We don't know what you need, brothers and sisters. We may have our individual needs in this life. And sometimes you have your own problems that you have to solve. But God knows all your problems. God knows what you're going through. God knows you cannot confine them to anyone but him. So why don't you use this verses in your lives? And what is the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ so that what the Bible says, and with all his abundant wealth through Christ Jesus, my God will supply all your needs. Let's turn this time to the book of John. The chapter is 16, verse 24. This is what is recorded. And let's read 1624. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. What is this things that we may ask our God through? Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ is saying to you and to me or to all of us until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Why don't you ask? And there are those who already ask. There are those who ask, may our family be complete. There are those who ask me, please guide my family away from danger and away from those who may oppress them. May you please guide all our family members to safety. And we just know that there are those who already that is attending with us now who united with their families because of the living God. He was able to make things possible. And so what does the Bible say? Ask and you'll receive and your joy will be complete. So we continue to ask that someday that our brethren who may be in jail will be freed and liberated. But we wait patiently. We ask towards our God that someday that everything will be well, that everything will just go back to normal. We wait patiently for the answer of our God. But whatever it takes, no matter what the world may come to, always understand obedience and fearing our God. Always following him has everything to do to be blessed in this life and in the life to come. So before we may pray, ask yourself, how faithful and loyal are you towards your God? How faithful are you when you're not seen by your loved ones, your parents, or even those who reaches out in your spiritual lives? Are you still faithful to the one who called you to be a true member of the Church of Christ? Always understand, even if you may lose your loved ones in this life, just because you are loyal and faithful to our God, you will always be protected. You will always be blessed by God. You will always receive the things you ask for as long as you obey and follow our God. That's the thing that we all would want for our family members to always do and obey so that we will always be blessed and receive the guidance that comes from our God and that we will never fear or have anything to worry if by chance parents have to go because they get older every time and weaker every time, but yet we are secured in our hearts that you will always remain faithful to the words of God and be blessed in this life and in the life which is to come. Let us live righteously before the sight of God in every day of our life so that we can be amongst those who will always be blessed by our God. Let us stand and we will pray.
our Father in heaven, we thank you so very much for all your blessings that you gifted to us in our everyday lives. Thank you so much for all the guidance throughout the months, days, and years. So many things that we must reflect upon. So many things that we should look back in how you saved us from these crucial moments of our lives when we were being attacked left and right, when we were being oppressed, dear Father. You were there to enter and uphold us. Thank you so much for being a God to us. We will never get tired of loving you. We will never get tired of being you. Our joy and happiness, our gladness is to give you joy, to follow your commands. And because we know how, how important it is in our lives, because we know when we do so, you dwell in us. No other feeling can fill that in whenever we experience your presence. Because even in the times of our needs and sufferings, when we feel your embrace, we forget our problems. We forget our turmoils. Praise be up to you. We worship and honor you for the rest of the days of our lives. We will dedicate ourselves. We will worship you in spirit and truth. But for the moment of time, we, we do acknowledge we failed you in so many ways. Sorry, dear God. Sorry, dear Father. It is not our heart. It is not our desire to fail you, our God. Please forgive us and let us receive once again your divine embrace. You know the situation of your church in this last days. We never forget also those who are incarcerated. We never forget those who have been rejected. We never forget our oppressed brethren. When you use us as your instruments, help us to understand the calling that you gave to us. And please bless the livelihood of all our brothers and sisters who support such activity so that we could live up to the expectation that you want and we'll be able to be blessed in this life. Thank you so much, dear Lord Jesus, for always making supplications to our God. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for always mediating us to our God. We will wait for your coming and don't forget any one of us so that we will be able to receive the salvation that we all aspire for. Father, we ask everything once again through means of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. and salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forever. Amen.